Epigenetics studies how our behaviors and environment can change the way genes work without altering the DNA sequence itself. These changes involve chemical modifications to DNA or its associated proteins, collectively known as the epigenome. Think of them as switches that turn genes on or off. These switches are crucial for development, influence health and disease, and can even be passed on to future generations. There are four main ways this happens. DNA methylation, histone modification, chromatin remodeling, and non-coding RNA. DNA methylation adds a small chemical tag, a methyl group, to cytosine bases in DNA. This process is managed by enzymes called DNA methyltransferases. When methyl groups cluster near promoters, they block transcription and make DNA coil tighter, reducing activity. Normal methylation helps keep cells stable, but when patterns are abnormal, gene expression falters. This can silence vital genes and trigger diseases like cancer and developmental disorders. External factors like diet, pollution, and stress can reshape these methylation patterns, altering gene activity across generations. Histone modification changes how DNA wraps around proteins called histones. Adding acetyl groups loosens DNA's grip, allowing genes to become active. Other tags like methyl groups tighten the coil, silencing genes. These modifications respond to signals and coordinate with methylation to fine-tune gene expression. Chromatin remodeling is like rearranging furniture in a room. Some genes are exposed, others hidden. Specialized protein complexes reshape chromatin to ensure the right genes are active at the right time. Non-coding RNAs regulate gene expression without making proteins. MicroRNAs prevent messenger RNAs from producing proteins. Long non-coding RNAs recruit proteins and influence transcription, adding yet another layer of regulation. All these mechanisms weave together into a vast regulatory tapestry, keeping the genome adaptable. When these processes go wrong, the results can be devastating. Cancer, autoimmunity, and neurological disease. In women, epigenetics contributes to breast and ovarian cancer, endometriosis, PCOS, and autoimmune conditions like lupus. Hormonal changes during pregnancy or menopause interact with epigenetic marks, shaping health outcomes across a lifetime. Because epigenetic changes are reversible, they offer new therapeutic opportunities, unlocking ways to restore health and fight disease. In our next video, we'll dive deeper into how these mechanisms shape two of the most common reproductive disorders in the next part of this series, endometriosis and polycystic ovary syndrome, and why they may represent opposite ends of the same epigenetic spectrum. Endometriosis and PCOS are the yin and yang of reproductive medicine. Endometriosis is linked to relatively low levels of prenatal and postnatal testosterone. At low levels, testosterone alters the trajectory of reproductive and physiological development, predisposing to endometriosis. By contrast, PCOS is driven primarily by higher prenatal and postnatal testosterone, resulting in an opposite set of traits. The hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, or HPO axis, is the command system that regulates reproductive function. It begins in the hypothalamus, which releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH, in a pulsatile rhythm. GnRH stimulates the pituitary to release follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. FSH promotes follicle growth and maturation, while encouraging estrogen production from granulosa cells. LH triggers ovulation, releasing a mature egg, and transforms the follicle into the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estrogen to prepare the uterus for pregnancy. Estrogen provides feedback to regulate GnRH, FSH, and LH, maintaining cyclical harmony. This feedback loop sustains early pregnancy if conception occurs, or leads to menstruation if it does not. Prenatal testosterone is present in females too, produced by fetal and maternal glands, ovaries, and fat tissue. Maternal testosterone also crosses the placenta, influencing the fetus's hormonal environment. Prenatal testosterone levels can be tracked by anatomical markers, such as anogenital distance. Another marker is the ratio of the second to fourth finger, the 2D4D digit ratio. In women with endometriosis, 
shorter AGD and longer 2D 4D ratios reflect lower prenatal testosterone exposure. Endometriosis is marked by hormonal patterns, lower LH, lower testosterone, higher SHBG, higher oxytocin, and others. Epigenetic changes drive the abnormal survival and implantation of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. Hypermethylation of progesterone receptor genes contributes to progesterone resistance, a hallmark of endometriosis. Histone modifications alter chromatin and gene accessibility, fueling inflammation and angiogenesis. Dysregulated microRNAs further disturb immune response, cell migration and invasion. In PCOS, Epigenetic changes affect genes regulating androgen production, insulin sensitivity, and inflammation. Hypomethylation of androgen-producing genes like CYP17. A1 drives hyperandrogenism, leading to acne, hirsutism, and metabolic issues. Histone changes alter chromatin accessibility, affecting follicle development and insulin sensitivity. MicroRNAs in PCOS tissue show different binding patterns compared to normal tissue, disrupting gene networks essential for proper follicle growth, inflammation control, and insulin regulation. The disrupted networks appear as broken or misfiring pathways with inflamed tissue glowing red. Dysregulated microRNAs disturb gene networks for follicle growth, inflammation, and insulin regulation. Despite their opposite presentations, both show similar patterns of epigenetic dysregulation, highlighting their common mechanistic foundation. Both disorders arise from epigenetic dysregulation, though they manifest as opposite reproductive syndromes. By understanding these reversible epigenetic changes, we open the door to therapies that restore balance and improve reproductive health. But reproductive health is only part of the story. In our final episode, we'll explore how heritable epigenetic changes can shape the developing brain itself, influencing conditions like autism spectrum disorder, and what this means for future generations. Epigenetics plays a significant role in autism spectrum disorder by influencing gene expression without changing the DNA sequence. These heritable modifications include DNA methylation, histone modifications, and regulation by non-coding RNAs. They alter the activity of genes involved in neurodevelopment, synaptic function, and neural circuitry. Abnormal methylation has been observed in genes critical for brain development, leading to gene silencing or overexpression. Hypermethylation of synaptic plasticity genes can impair signaling, while hypomethylation of immune genes can fuel neuroinflammation. Both impaired signaling and inflammation have been linked to autism spectrum disorder. Histone modifications reshape chromatin and gene accessibility, influencing key neurodevelopmental genes. Dysregulated microRNAs upset the balance of gene networks essential for brain maturation. Environmental factors such as stress, toxins, and maternal nutrition can trigger or worsen these epigenetic changes. Because epigenetic modifications are reversible, they present promising therapeutic opportunities. Epigenetic changes can also occur in germ cells before conception, disrupting neurodevelopmental gene regulation. Preconception paternal exposure to toxins or stress may alter sperm methylation patterns, influencing offspring. Similarly, maternal stress, nutritional deficiencies, or chemical exposures can reshape fetal epigenetics. These marks influence genes for brain development, synaptic function, and immune balance, shaping autism susceptibility. Some of these changes are heritable, showing how parental environment can predispose children to autism. Persistent pollutants like hydrocarbons, PCBs, lead, mercury, and pesticides can disrupt neurodevelopment through epigenetics. For example, Pesticide exposure has been linked to altered DNA methylation affecting neuronal growth and synapse formation. Nutrition also plays a role. Folate, vitamin B12, and methyl donors influence DNA methylation processes. Deficiencies excesses or diets high in processed foods can lead to inflammation and harmful epigenetic changes. These parental factors can modify germ cell epigenetics, affecting neural pathways linked to autism in their children. Epigenetic inheritance underscores the importance of healthy environments and choices, even before conception. Public health programs that reduce processed food and environmental toxins may be first steps in addressing autism risk. By tackling environmental risks and targeting reversible epigenetic changes, we may improve outcomes and unlock new hope for autism.